Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear learners, I am Dr. Himani Singh working as an assistant professor with Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Mathura. I welcome you all to the session 18 of the course Professional Communication for Managers. Session 18 is on Public Relations and Communication. Now again, being a business manager, it is again a very important tactic that how you are going to maintain relations with the public. So, by the end of this session, you all will be able to understand the basic concept as well as the need of public relations for an organizational member. Not just this, in fact, in this session, I am going to talk about different type of public relations which you as a company person is going to share. Also, I am going to elaborate on the public relations process. With this, I will be talking about the different publics present in public relation, the terminology, how you tend to express that terminology. Also, I am going to talk about some of the tools for public relations and towards the end, I am going to highlight one major tool of public relations that's press release and how it is differentiated from press report. So moving further in this regard, public relations, yes, it is a strategic communication. Now why I am calling it as strategic communication? Because you design the things that what you want to communicate. So before moving on to depth, that why uh, we call the public relations as strategic communication, I just want to quote the definition which is being prescribed by Public Relations Society of America. And they have very clearly defined public relations that it is a strategic communication process that builds mutually beneficial relationship between the organization and their publics. So, it's very truly, it's very truly said that public relations is a strategic communication wherein you strategically think that how and why and where we can go on for making a strong connection, a strong bonding between the publics as well as the organization. So when we talk about public relation, a term comes into our mind, that's advertising. Some people say, oh, public relations is advertising. Now, if I talk about advertising and public relations, yes, there exists the difference. There is a very valid difference when we talk in context of advertising or we talk in context of public relations. So if I talk about one term which is advertising, very common term. The other one is public relations. Don't get confused with both these terms. because they both are quite different. When we talk about advertising, that is more of a paid media, wherein you need to spend some money to get that publicity. That's why we call it as paid media. Contrary to this, when we talk about public relations, it's nowhere paid media. It is earned media that out of your credibility, out of your goodwill, the kind of image your organization is having 
that is what you have earned and that's why we call it as earned media that you get the publicity out of your credibility not because you are paying money no not at all so when we say that advertising is paid media and uh, public relations is earned media so of course advertising becomes more expensive and when we talk in context of uh, public relations it is less expensive if we talk in context of money itself right so apart from this when we talk about advertising yes it is controlled by company company controls it whereas if we talk about advertising who controls it just think of it yes it has been controlled by the media by the external sources whereas when we talk about advertising there is full control of the organization now again you might be wondering that uh, when public relations can be controlled by media then why we as a business manager needs to worry no you need to be careful because how that media control is done because somewhere or the other you have set your credibility your goodwill and that's how you are getting worth from the media not just this when it is about advertising some of your product or service audiences are quite skeptical skeptical about this why because they know that of course you are going to show the positive side of that product the positive side of that service while overlooking the negative aspects is it yes most of the time this happens that i want to gain publicity i want to get get into advertise myself i want to increase my arena by showing what is positive in me so just because of this reason audience tends to become more skeptical whereas if i talk about public relations audience gain the trust because it is coming from media so when media is validating my organization so audience tends to believe that yes it is more authentic it's more good it can be trusted more in comparison to a mere advertisement apart from this if i talk about that uh, in advertising most of the time you'll be finding that we use we take help of visuals to create a good effect so that audience can be convinced whereas in public relations we take help of language rather than just the visuals yes with language we can bring on to the visuals but more emphasis is being given on the language aspect we are not focusing more on to the visual aspect that what is visible we focus more on the words how it is being delivered what is the language we are using that is what we are focused upon last but not the least one yes advertising might give you a good exposure a wide exposure but if you are looking for building trust building goodwill then yes rather than going for just a mere advertisement you should go on for building good public relations because that is again going to bring trust to your trust between you and your people your publics so this is just the difference between advertising as well as public relations so dear learners don't get confused with these two terms now moving further we need to understand that what we mean by public relations more into the depth now public relations basically refers to the practice of managing as well as disseminating managing as well as disseminating the information to the public why because you want to build some kind of perception in the public about your organization about the products which you are selling about the services which you are providing so for that you want to go on for bringing some kind of impact so this is what is public relation that you are going to manage you are going to disseminate you are going to float some information because you want to make some kind of perception which should be made in the mind of the publics about you 
And of course, when we talk about publics, who are those? Yes, they are our actual customers, present customers, our prospective customers or else it can be investors, shareholders, stakeholders, government and so on. So these forms the publics which I am again and again saying that you need to have good relationship with the publics. So who is the publics that is very very important you need to understand that. Yes, uh, there are certain basic features when we talk in context of uh, public relations. The very first feature is about that public relations is a planned effort. Yes, it is. It is not an activity which can be done in a haphazard manner. No, it is a systematic affair. It is a planned effort. I am going to think of my objective. That what my objective is. If I am disseminating this information, if I am going and floating this information to the publics, what is my idea? What I want? What is my objective? That means that it is a planned effort. It cannot be any haphazard way. It cannot be a very casual way. No, you have a well thought plan in the mind of yours about your organization and this is what you wanted to communicate to the publics and that's why we call it as that it is a planned effort not just the planned effort it needs to be a sustained effort public relations is not a one-time affair that okay today i will be communicating uh, with my publics and after now, after that, uh, for next 10 years, I am not communicating with them and again I get up and uh, I will be going and communicating with them. No. It requires sustainability. Um, when we talk in terms of that, sustained effort, continuous efforts, repetitive efforts are required to maintain and grow and nurture your relationship with the publics. So, remember one point that it is not a one day affair or a one time affair it is a it is sustained effort which you need to repeat again and again so that the momentum is moving on and what you wanted to inculcate is going through your customers not just this in fact when we talk in context of public relations relations when i am saying relations so it is more where more than one party is involved for that you need to nurture the relationship so yes it is there are different parties who are involved into uh, public relations and of course it is not a general job it's not a generalistic job which anyone can do no it is a specialist job and for that what kind of skills you require can you think of any Yes, it is a specialist job. I say you need to have good communication skills. You need to be tactful. You need to have good interpersonal skills. You need to be quick in decision making. So see, not just these skills, apart from this you need to be a good analytical person who is having good critical thinking skills, good analytical skills and you are trying to view an information which you want to share with your publics critically because again you cannot go and reach your publics unprepared. You need to have sound information, proper information which should have some gravity, if that gravity is missing you are going to ruin your public relations with your publics, trust me. So it is a specialist job. It's not like that any person in the organization can do this job. For that, you need to have a different work set, different work skills, different competencies required. Might be possible you are running an organization, but you are not good in maintaining good relationships. It is again some other person whom you have appointed as a spokesperson or as a public relationship officer in your organization. 
So whenever it comes dealing with media, dealing with customers, you always bring that public relationship officer in front of them. And you being the CEO, you are not going there because you are not good at PR skills. So you need to be good at it and it is a specialist job, just make sure. Yes, it is more about creation, developing as well as maintaining of the information or the understanding between you and the publics, right? So these are some of the basic features when we talk in context of public relations. Apart from this, I also want to highlight few points that PR people are actually the storytellers. They are brilliant storytellers. When we listen to a story, what happens with us? We tend to get into the depth. And this is what uh, there comes a difference between a good storyteller and a bad storyteller. And when we say PR people, they need to be brilliant storytellers so that they should make the public to be engrossed in the organizational activities, uh, any, anything, product, services, whatsoever. So they need to be brilliant storytellers. Not just this, in fact, PR people, that's public relationship people, they are the image shapers. They are the people who can build your image, build the image, the goodwill, the credibility of an organization in the mind of the publics. So that is what is, again, another beauty or another point which I want to highlight about PR people public relationship people, they are image shapers, brilliant image shapers. They'll show you, they'll try to convince you in such a manner about their organization that you tend to trust them. Again, I'm not saying that they tend to fool you. No, not in that way. But what happens is that there are two organizations. They both are good, they both are trustworthy. But one organization, they are very active into maintaining healthy relationship with the public. But the other one, they are also good. They are not uh, any dishonest people. No, nothing like that. But they are not able to maintain healthy relationship with the publics. So of course, public is going to have point of view about company A, not about company B. So gradually, if we talk about the success of company, it depends on the relationship with your publics because they are the people who are going to give you feedback. So, yes, um, they are the image shapers. Yes, this we have already discussed about that advertising is uh, more of paid media, whereas public relations is earned media. Not just this, I also want to focus on this aspect that is PR is not exact science. Remember this point. There's no science rule out there. Basically, it is an art. It depends from person to person, from company to company, that how they are designing their PR activities. And not only the designing aspect, how they are implementing it all also. How they are crafting it, how they are bringing it in front of the people. That is again creates distinction or differentiation between two companies. Now there can be two companies. Both the companies, they are doing tree plantation. But how they are forwarding this message to the public, that is going to create a distinction. And that's why I say always that PR is not exact science. If you are looking for some science formulas after this, so sorry, it's not that. Yes, there are certain basics for having good PR, but that does not mean that every company is need to have similar patterns, similar ways. No, it is not possible. Moving further, I just want to talk about scope of public relations. That as a PR manager or as a company person, where you think that public relations is into? If I start with managing communication, yes, good PR is going to help you in managing and strengthening communication. Either it is with external public it can be your prospective customers, present customers and so on or with your 
internal publics. Whose internal publics? That's the employees. Yes, absolutely correct. Or else, PR or scope of PR lies in handling the crisis situation. Now, what is a crisis situation? Crisis situation might be that uh, some big change is happening and that's leading you into some kind of crisis wherein your image is being wherein the image of your organization is being tarnished and so on. So, how you are going to manage that crisis situation? Through PR, again PR also covers that aspect. Not just this, in fact, marketing of your company. I am not talking only about some of your products or services, I am talking about managing the marketing activities of your company, throughout company. That is more about PR. Not just this, in fact, PR is more about building strong relationships with your publics, lightening. Now again, when we talk about lightening. Many a times, many businesses, they are just growing out of because they have good networks, they are able to license properly with the required people, with the required publics. So that is about relationship management. With relationship management, uh, just few minutes back, I was talking about that PR people, they are image builders. So PR has its scope or it covers the image management of any organization and not only the image management, also when I talk about lightening and everything, it is also linked with the managing resources. That how are you optimally utilizing your resources in the best possible manner? How are you able to lighten? How are you able to network with the people around you, with the publics around you? so that you are able to manage your resources whether internal or external. If I say internal, it can be people, raw material, different things are there, right, that you need to manage. So yes, with good public relations skills, you can manage that also. Apart from this, as I started with this, so uh, with this topic, I said that yes, somewhere PR is more about strategic communication. So how strategically you are able to manage the things around you, which is going to impact the business. That is more about PR last but not the least one. It also covers how you are going to manage the risks. Yes, every business does have certain risks. It's not like that you don't have risk or your business is risk free. No, either certain businesses they are having high risk, there are certain businesses who are having low risk, they are at the lower end, but for sure you are going to have certain risks when you are doing business and you are into the business management, right? So for that, for managing that risk also, you need to have good PR relations. Later in the session, I am going to cover all such points in detail also. So uh, with this, I want to focus upon the different public relations. What are the different public relations which you uh, think you will be coming across? So when I say public relations, you need to have maintain good and cordial relations with the media people. So we call it as media relations. You also need to have good relationship with the customers. So we call it as customer relations. Not just this, in fact, you need to see within your organization also and you need to have good relations with the employee. So we call it as internal relations also, right, or employee relations. At the same time, whenever or wherever your organization is, you owe your business owe something to the society at the societal level. So you need to have, you need to maintain some kind of societal relationship in which you are thinking about your society, you are trying to patch up, you are trying to make up certain things for your society. So that is more about societal relationships, not just this. Wherever you are, you might be dealing with some of the governmental rules, regulations. So therein, you need to look for maintaining and having cordial relationships with the government around. Last but not the least one, because somewhere your investors are again the most important aspect of your business. 
which falls into the category of publics. So, therein also you need to have good relationship so that you can provide them with timely information, with correct information and at the same time they can also trust you. This is how see public relations are being done. How I am going to build pu good public relations with my customer? If I am going to provide my customer with good product, with new innovative products, with good services, of course that person, that customer is going to build trust on me. And in back, I am going to get credibility of his trustworthiness. So, this is how we keep on moving into building relations, right? Now, uh, I am going to elaborate you that how public relation process goes. As I said that it is strategic communication. So, of course, it is deliberately thought of. So, when I say deliberately thought of, so, when you go on for building public relations, the very first thing is you need to understand that what your objective is. Do you want to build image? Do you want to serve society? Do you just want to provide uh, or make your employees satisfied out of this public relations? So, be clear, research your objective, that what your objective is all about. Why are you thinking in having good relations with anyone around you? Now, again in that when we talk about researching, you need to look for the objective as well as for whom or else you can say who is going to be the publics for you. Because again, we do have different publics. So, who is the publics for you? And then in the later on stage, in the stage 1 itself, you should go on gathering the information that what my people want from me. That is what you should start looking into. For example, if your objective is again to uh, establish your credibility or something or whatever, to establish yourself as a great employer, fine. So, in that case my publics might be my employees because I want to go on for becoming a great employer. So, I am trying to catering to that particular issue through my employees and for that I just want to gather the information that where I can work upon, what are those areas which I need to look for, for building uh, myself or portraying myself or disseminating myself as a great employer in context to the employees, fine. So, this is what is the first stage wherein you need to be clear with the objective, who is going to be a publics and then going on for the collection of the information, right. Once you are through with this, then you need to move on for the policy formulation, that you need to follow the policy for that, whatever objective you have decided whatever information you have gathered ki okay I will be looking for this particular aspect then for that you need to go on for formulating certain policy, certain strategies that okay I am talking about this public relation for this publics this is going to be my strategy for this and the third stage is about implementation that how I am going to bring it into action. This is more about action stage, implementation tool. Of course, uh, somewhere when we talk about implementation tools, initially you need to think of that which tools you will be using, which communication tools you will be using and then you should plan on for the blueprint for the action stage and then you will go on communicating, disseminating the things, bringing your publics more close to you. and after that make sure you are taking uh, taking feedback from your people also. Why this feedback is required? Why? Because if you will be getting the feedback you can analyze that whether my objective was correct, the information which I gathered, gathered in the stage 1 was it correct 
was it complete? If it was not, then where I was lacking? That you need to really think upon. So that you can come up with the suggestions, with the recommendations and when you are starting your relations again or when you are starting this process again, then you can have or you can be more sound, you can be more thorough that what you need to do and why are you doing this also. So this is all about a good public relations process, fine. Now, Moving further in this regard, it was David and Guth in 2012, they, come up, they came up with a terminal with different terminologies which tends to describe the different publics. If I talk about traditional publics, who is traditional publics? Traditional publics are again your traditional customers, your government, media, employees, uh, your stakeholders, your investors and so on. These are the traditional publics, fine. And now when we talk about non-traditional publics, non-traditional public is the public which is not aware or not linked with your objectives. They are not able to associate themselves somewhere. They don't know anything about you, don't know anything about you. They are unknown to you. That is what is non-traditional publics is about. The third category is aware publics. Now see, what's the difference between traditional publics and aware publics? Traditional publics is they are somewhere or the other involved with you directly, right? Whereas aware publics, they know about you. They know what the organization is about, what are the values, but somewhere, they are not able to connect with you right now, not able to connect. Might be possible in later stages this non-traditional publics or aware publics is getting into traditional publics, that's possible. But right now they are not aware as well as they are not able to match themselves with the organizational objectives or values or beliefs and so on. That is what is aware publics is about. Of course, when we talk about non-traditional or aware publics, they can become in the later stages the traditional publics if you are going to have good or if you are going to initiate good public relations with them. Apart from this, another category is intervening publics. Now, what's intervening publics? For example, media people what media people are doing. Now, when we say media people, see, if you want to disseminate any information and if you are disseminating the information through media to your customers, then media here becomes the intervening uh, publics. Fine. How are you disseminating that information to the customers? Through media. So, media here plays the role of disseminating, pub uh, sorry, intervening publics. Another one is primary publics. Primary publics is directly impacted by the organizational decisions, directly impacted. If I take example of employees, they are primary public. They are the customers, they are going to be primary public. They are directly impacted by the organizational decisions. Whereas when we talk in context of secondary publics, they are not at all directly involved as well as they are not at all directly impacted by the organizational decisions. Apart from this, when we talk about internal publics, it is, yes, you all are getting right, employees is the internal publics, whereas external public is, again, outside the organization, whosoever falls outside the organization. Apart from this, we do have another category that's uh, domestic publics and international publics. Domestic publics is publics which is present within the nation, within the nation and international publics is outside the nation, 
I hope you are able to understand the different categories of publics in public relations. Now moving forward, I am going to talk about tools of public relations. Now yes, there are different tools which you can use for making your public relations more cordial with the public. So one way out here is going for speeches, addressing the gathering, right? You can, if you are a good public speaker, again here, see how you can go on for bringing your public speaking skills here. If you are a good public speaker, you will be able to put your point across and yes, you will be able to gain acceptance from your public. So speeches is one tool which you can use either for motivating your employees or your customers or informing your customers about some new product, anything. Apart from this, organizing some special events. Special events can be that you are releasing either a press release or you are going for organizing a press conference and so on. So these are some of the special events which you as a company personnel can organize for again going for good public relations. Not just this, in fact, you can come up with some kind of fact sheets. Fact sheets is again printed material. For your organization. Uh, for example, you released a press release and people are asking for some more confirmation about that press release. So you are providing them with some of the fact sheets which tends to uh, not become the part of press release but yes, the, it is the supporting material which you can provide to the people. So fact sheets is again one tool by which you can go on for having cordial or developing or strengthening the relationships with your publics. Not just this, you can organize some of the public welfare programs and also you can do certain programs for building employee relations. These days companies, they are focusing a lot on their employee relations because they know that employees are the assets of the organization. And the moment you as an employer is able to build cordial relations with your employees, you and your organization is going to do wonders. Also, you can go on for sponsoring some of the uh, sports event these days you might have seen if i take example of cricket you might have seen that there are big big hoardings and why because uh, there are some common uh, sports which are being watched very frequently so you need to look for that that which event is going as per your uh, criteria right and not just this you can also go on for organizing some of the exhibitions trade fairs wherein you can go on for uh, disseminating and building and nurturing relationships with the publics. Last but not the least one, you can also go on for holding certain seminars, conferences, which is again giving or providing uh, some support which says that yes, you are also uh, somewhere more sensitive to the needs of the people. So these are some of the tools which you can use for maintaining and building and nurturing healthy relationships with the publics. Fine. Now moving forward, there are certain mistakes which you as a public relationship officer or your organization can conduct when it comes to public relations. The very first point is occasional PR activities. As uh, in the session itself, I told you that you started a PR activity uh, today and then you are following up that activity after 10 years. <laughs> so again, it should not be that much occasional. You should be in news. Continuously you should be there. You should be uh, in with the people, in with the publics so that they can have or they can create more impact about your company on their mind. Not just this, if you are going for jumping to only big players. See, when we talk about public relations, 
and particularly I will be talking here about uh, media, right. Now again uh, we can how we need to target people through media if media is the intervening public for us. So what happens is that many a times we believe the company believes that if we will be targeting if we will be having big players big media people with with us for disseminating some of the important information of the organi of the organization then it is going to be good no not necessarily not necessarily it can be it cannot be might be possible that if you are getting uh, a news uh, if you are getting a press release done in uh, times of india but the press release is concerned with the people who are not uh, somewhere connected with Times of India or they do not read it, then what is the point? What is the point in choosing that media, right? So, it was just uh, Times of India is just, a, uh, just an example, just an hypothetical example I am taking here. Uh, so, again it can be uh, you can go on for selecting media as per your own choice, as per the criteria which is required. Also sending mass emails is not a good idea, never a good idea because when it is about mass emails we are not the public is not able to get connectivity with you. So that emotional connect is missing. Also incorrect targeting you are targeting the wrong publics there in the process I told you that you need to be very clear that who is going to be your publics and giving up easily. See PR efforts they need to be continuous they need to be sustained and you are going to get benefits after a long time. If you are looking for easy success sorry you cannot get fine. So these are some of the mistakes which we tend to commit when we deal with public relations. Now moving forward with another topic that is the tool one of the tool of public relations that is press release. What is a press release? Any idea coming to your mind? Yes, when we talk about a press release it is a factual statement which is being issued by the company which covers any important change or any important news and they want to convey that news the company wants to convey that news to the publics. So, it is a factual statement it is going to have proper facts and figures it cannot be uh, it can, they cannot go on for giving wrong information. So, it is issued by a company that is again a very very important aspect. Some people believe that it is issued by the newspaper people no press release is always going to be issued by the company and it is not paid also. With this one more aspect you need to understand that press release is not an advertisement. Undoubtedly people use it as their branding tool but it should not go like as if you are advertising something. It needs to be somewhat different from your advertisement. Because if it is going to be like your advertisement then somewhere audience becomes more skeptical. Also make sure that it should be devoid of any kind of wrong fact and figure make sure because again that is being issued by the company that is coming from the company side you cannot go on for some wrong information placing wrong information right. Make sure whenever you are preparing a press release it needs to be as concise as possible without missing the main message fine as concise as possible. But do not forget that um, just to make it concise you are missing the main message that is wrong that is wrong but make sure that the message is intact fine. So that is just the basics about press release. Now, you might have come across um, two terms that is press release or press report. Some people say that it is oh they are the same but no there is the difference. When we talk about press release it is issued by company whereas when we talk about press report it is prepared 
by newspaper people fine now another distinction press release is more into the informative nature it is going to provide you the information whereas with press report you will be finding that analytical part is also attached it is more of the analysis of the information which is being released by the company in press release the newspaper people cannot make any changes if they want to incorporate any changes they need to contact the company personnel and yes there in the company personnel is going to make the necessary changes as required by the by the uh, press reporters but they cannot make any changes but who has prepared the press report it is being prepared by the newspaper people now the point is to make you people understand that think of the situations that when you are going to join the organizations what are going to be the situations when you will be drafting or you will be releasing a press release just think about it yes you might be releasing a press because there is a change in some at some important top level management position in your organization there is some ceo change there is some md change or so on or else you are coming up with some new product new service for your publics or else you just want to share uh, some profit figures or profit figures of the organization of the year and so on also many a times companies tends to issue a press release because they are being caught into some negative news and for the same they are releasing a press in order to go on for damage control to provide right information to the people there is some wrong information in the market and you are releasing a press coming up with certain facts certain figures which tends to make you believe that okay what's the real news is all about so yes when you are going to be the part of an organization you will be preparing one or the other press release right but again when we talk about making a press release you need to have brilliant communication skills particularly when it talks about communication it is more of the writing skills that you need to have you need to be tactful moving forward i am going to talk about that how to go on for planning a press release there are three stages pre writing stage writing stage and rewriting stage whenever you are going to prepare a press release first pre writing stage you have not started writing so what you need to do is gather necessary information fine gathering all the information now during the preparation during the writing part you should not go back and you should not find out the uh, information it is always the right idea that you should prepare yourself well and for that you need to have all the required doc documents which you require for the preparation of the press release once you are done with this then you need to start preparing start drafting start writing your uh press release in the proper format and after that you need to go on for the rewriting stage wherein you need to proofread fine so that is how you need to plan your press release and for that we do have a format yes uh, there is a general format there are certain minor changes being done by each and every organization but i am just talking about a general format wherein you need to have very attractive headline make sure that headline is a small one not a big headline it should be attractive it should be able to arouse attention of the audience right that's what is very much required after that you need to put the date line when the press release is going to be issued and after the date line comes about the introduction part introduction is again very important thing 
because it's the initial part of the, the headline which is going to give brief information that what the press release is all about and then you can go on for the body part for the descrip describing the press release and last is the boilerplate section. Boilerplate section is the about section about the organization. Something, something enthusiastic, energetic thing which you want that your people should know about your company should come in the boilerplate. Fine. And last one is media contact information. Now again that depends, that varies from company to company that whether you are only going to uh, mention your, your professional email ID or you also want to present your name, your uh, contact numbers that is again on the discretion. Most of the times you will be finding that an email ID, an e official email ID of the company is being mentioned there. So that if anyone wants to get any kind of clarification over that news, over that press release, they can contact to that person directly, right. So this is how you go on for drafting a press release. Now I will be just focusing upon that what we mean by an effective press release. I said that it is not paid. So why, why the media people, they are going to publish your press release over the other persons or the over the other company press release. Remember that if your press release is going to have high worth, high value, high news value, for sure your press release is going to get center space and it is going to get large coverage as well if it is worth for the media people. Yes, when we talk about press release, it should not be in, it should not be prepared in the haphazard manner. You should stick to some uh, format again, which is being prescribed, um, wherein you should always have give a small headline to your press release, date line, uh, something in brief, then the body aspect, media contact information. These are some basics of any format, basics which you should follow when you are preparing a press release. Not just this, in fact, make sure that uh, it is a factual statement, true facts and figures you are mentioning. Please cross check before writing it on the press release. Make sure it is factual, it is correct, they are complete, not just this make your press release interesting. Why people are going to read your press release? So that is what the introduction part is very important. That is why I said in the format, in the introduction part, you need to come up with some lines which is going to instigate the interest in the audiences to read the whole press release. So of course, headline needs to be excited, but that introduction needs to be even more excited. Because people tend to read headlines, but they tend to miss the body part. And after just initial reading of one, two lines, they tend to get that whether I want to read this or I do not want to read this. So be very sure with that, right. Also, it should have brevity, it should be concise, it should not be too lengthy, not too lengthy because if it is going to be a lengthy one people might not read your press release. So make sure it is quite concise, not too lengthy, right. Also the way you are displaying it, that should be appropriate, that should be correct. That means we talk about that what is going to be font size and all such things, at least from your end when you are preparing, all that thing should be correct, fine. Is it okay? So that is what is a press release. Now again, when we talk about a press release, it is one of the most important aspect for maintaining and nurturing good and cordial relationships with the publics. Through that, either you can make your image or you can also many a times break your image. That is why again and again I am telling you, 
that while drafting a press release, you need to be very cautious. You need to be very careful because if you are not going to be careful, then you might end up stating some wrong facts and figures. You might not be focusing on the initial aspect, on the introduction aspect. You might not be focusing on that why this press release is even prepared. Be clear with that, that what is your objective for giving this press release? You only want to give information or you want to go on for changing some idea? Fine. So, that is just the beauty of a press release. Through that, you can go for it. Fine. So, now uh, I hope, dear learners, you are able to understand that why public relations is actually an important aspect for you. Pu without public relations, you cannot move ahead in the organizational affairs. Why? Because your organization is meant for the publics only. If there is no publics, if there is no relationship with your publics, do you really think that you will be able to survive in the market? No, not at all. So I hope dear learners, you are able to understand the basic concept behind public relations, why it is required, what are the different public relations, not just this, also the public relationship process wherein you need to focus upon looking first for the objective. And yes, also in the end, I discussed about the different publics and the tools of public relationship and what we mean by a press release and how it is different from press report and also how to draft a good press report. So if next time anyone is going to ask you to prepare a press release, for sure you will be able to do that. So dear learners, I hope you were able to get this session. Thank you and happy learning.